welcome to a cube training video. I'm Brian and I'm part of the cube training group. Today I'll show a Texacom Premier Elite 24 panel and explain how the terminals work. The Premier Elite 24 being a grey 2 panel is great for domestic and small business applications. It comes in both metal and plastic enclosures providing 8 hardwired zones with the capability of expanding up to 24 zones, making it ideal for small to medium sized applications. So let's take a look inside. To start off, we have our PSU connection, which is 13.7 volts, which is supplied by a power supply underneath, keeping our mains entry separate to the rest of our cables. Next up, we have our kickstart button for powering up the panel, but just by the battery, which you see underneath, which is connected by the positive and negative. There's our Digicom outputs at the top right of the panel, these are used when connecting a standalone communicator to the panel. Along the bottom, we start with our five connections took for the SAB, which are used to power and communicate with the device. Alongside of that, we have our connectors to the keypad and zone expanders, the positive and negative to provide the power to the device but also TXRX which stands for transmit and receive. There you can see a small flashing light indicating that the panel is communicating with the keypad and other expanders. Next along we have outputs 1 and 2. Output 1 being used for the internal speaker, output 2 being used to power all the devices connected to our Texacom panel. Here we have our auxiliary fault connectors for monitoring the tamper switch circuit for all the connected devices. The next eight ports are lining the bottom of the panel are the zones where each device is connected. On the right hand side we've got the expander port which is used for connecting local expanders. Alongside of that we have a comms port both here and here. This is for connecting a PC using Windex as a computer software to help with programming. Just above that we have a flash port connector. We'll use this to update the panel's firmware. Just above that centre of the panel we have the tamper switch. Just alongside of that we have the jumper to disable the tamper when works need to be carried out on the panel. Located underneath the tamper is a default button. Functions like resetting the control panel to factory default settings. The power LED located into the centre of the panel flashes to indicate the control panel is working correctly. If the light is continuously on or off, this could suggest a problem with the panel. The battery charge current selector here changes from 300 milliamps setting for a 7 amp battery to 750 milliamps for a 17 amp battery. Last of all, we have a port for the engineer's keypad. This is for the engineer to access and plug into the system easily for testing and programming. 